Hey, I'm Rob Witcher from Destination Certification, and I'm here to help you pass the CISSP exam. We're going to go through a review of the major instant response topics in Domain 7 to understand how they interrelate and to guide your studies. This is the second of six videos for Domain 7. I've included links to the other mind map videos in the description below. These mind map videos are one part of our complete CISSP masterclass. Before we get into the incident response process, let's define two terms. We'll start with an event. What's an event? An event is an observable occurrence. Someone logging in is an event. A file being written to a drive is an event. Someone scanning the external firewall is an event. We do not particularly care about the vast majority of events. Now, what is an incident? An incident is an event that negatively impacts the organization in some way. A server crashing, a password being brute forced, an attacker getting through the firewall. These are all incidents. We definitely care about incidents. Incident response is focused on detecting incidents, providing an effective and efficient response to reduce the impact of the organization, maintaining or restoring business continuity, and defending against future attacks. This diagram I'm showing you here is a typical incident response process. There's an important point I want to make while I'm showing you this, though. There are lots of different incident response processes out there from different authoritative sources such as NIST and CSERT. These different incident response process frameworks define slightly different numbers of steps or names of steps. I wouldn't overly focus on the exact steps and names. All of these incident response processes have the same underlying goals in mind. Be prepared for an incident, be able to detect an incident and then respond quickly, minimize the damage, return to normal operations and learn from the incident so you can improve things and try to prevent future incidents. So given that warning about not overly focusing on the exact steps, let's now go through these exact steps. To effectively respond to an incident, you must first do a fair bit of preparation. Create an incident response policy and procedures, identify and train appropriate people, put in place monitoring capabilities, etc, etc. The incident response process can be categorized into three high-level buckets, triage, action and investigation. The incident response process can be categorized into three high-level buckets, triage, action investigation, and recovery. We'll start at the beginning of the incident response process, triage. The first and absolutely most important step in the incident response process is detection. If you cannot detect that an incident has occurred, there is no way you can activate your response process and do all the rest of the stuff we're going to talk about here shortly. If you are asked on the exam to put the incident response process steps in order, always look for detection as the first step. There are all sorts of ways that you can identify and detect incidents from the flood of events that are constantly occurring. We can use tools like intrusion detection systems, which feed into our security information and event management systems, or building monitoring systems like fire alarms or a report from an employee, among many other ways. And remember, the difference between an event and observable occurrence and an incident, which is an event that has a negative impact on the organization. Once we've detected an incident, the next step is to respond by activating our incident response team. And one of the first things the incident response team is going to do is conduct an impact assessment. They're going to try to determine the severity of the incident and how long it will take to recover. This impact assessment derives the rest of the process. And if the maximum tolerable downtime is going to be exceeded, the MTD, then this will not be treated as an incident, but rather will declare a disaster and enact our BCP or DRP plans. More on that in video six of domain seven here. When I talk about business continuity management, I'll link to that video below. The next category is action and investigation. And the next step is mitigation. This is where we try to minimize the damage and contain the incident. For example, if we have a worm ripping through our network, we may decide to disconnect systems from the network. Or if we have a fire, activate the fire suppression system. These are ways to try to minimize the damage. Reporting is actually conducted throughout the incident response process. What is important to remember is that there should be one dedicated person on the incident response team who is reporting out to all the relevant stakeholders, management, investors, regulators, customers, the media, etc. While the rest of the team incident response team stays focused on responding to the incident. 
The recovery category is where we work on getting things back to business as usual and making improvements so that the same incident doesn't occur again. The recovery step is where we work on returning things to business as usual. In the example of the worm outbreak, we eradicate the worm and begin reconnecting systems to the network. Or in the example of the fire, we clean up the charred, soaking mess of the office, install new carpeting, paint the walls, move in new furniture, etc. These are all examples of recovering to get back to business as usual. Remediation actually begins in parallel with mitigation. Remediation is where we are performing root cause analysis to determine how we can prevent, say, for example, the continued spread of the worm while we recover systems or prevent the reignition of the fire. Remediation continues through the recovery process and the closure of the incident and leads into lessons learned. Lessons learned is the post-incident step where we do some soul searching. How did this happen? How can we prevent this from happening again? Why? The goal of lessons learned is to improve processes and systems and teach people to try and prevent future incidents. And if they do occur, detect them more quickly and respond more effectively. All right, and that is an overview of incident response within Domain 7, covering the most critical concepts you need to know for the exam. If you're looking for a PDF version of these mind maps, you can download a completely free version. Link is in the description below.